Have you seen one of these 200cc generic Chinese UTVs? We are starting a UTV electric conversion. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep watching this project and to keep an eye on all the updates as they come. You've probably seen these 200cc Chinese kind of off-branded UTVs. Now, they come normally equipped with a 200cc Honda knockoff engine. It is fuel injected. It's single cylinder. According to the websites that sell these, they'll do over 100 kilometers an hour. That's about 60 miles an hour. And that is very fast for something with the build quality that one of these guys has. So these things are spec pretty good for the price. Now this one sells for about $5,000 Canadian. I got it on an extreme discount at my local Princess Auto, which is kind of the place to go to get some good deals on some great Chinese products. Now they sell like tools and stuff mostly. It's like Harbor Freight in the United States. They were doing a clear out on this where I got it for $2,500, half price. The problem was I took it out to the Gears and Tech Cottage and it was super loud. It's very, very loud. It also has a solid rear axle. So the turning radius on this is horrible and it ended up like pushing itself through. So it wasn't quite suited for what I was looking for. Lucky enough for me, the engine stopped working soon after. The starter failed actually, so it wasn't engaging. I looked at how to replace the starter. It was a big pain in the butt. So we parked it for the season and you may have seen the gears and tech orange golf cart that we did instead. That was a golf cart conversion that we did to just kind of soup it up. Well, that golf cart died. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. Just at the end of the season. So now I'm back to the UTV but it still doesn't run and it's not the best suited for what we're looking for. So I decided we're gonna do an electric conversion. So we're gonna take out the entire running gear of this thing and we're gonna convert it to electric and I'm gonna take you through the process that we are gonna do to convert this to electric. Now the first thing I can show you guys is our new electric rear end. So this comes as a complete kit. I bought it on AliExpress. It has rear axles complete with a differential. Now you may be wondering what the heck powers an electric UTV conversion. Well, that's this guy right here. Now this is a 3000 watt AC motor. It has regenerative braking and it should be splined correctly so that this shaft or this input shaft goes right here on this splined differential. So it should bolt right up. We've also got, now this is a 3000 watt motor. And then this guy is our DC controller. So all of this together costed me almost 2000 Canadian dollars. It also runs on 60 volts of power and I should be able to get a top speed of about 45 kilometers an hour, which is roughly 30 miles an hour. Now that might not sound very fast to you, but keep in mind, we are in a golfing community where the speed limit, the top speed limit is 15 kilometers an hour. That's roughly 10 miles an hour. So to be able to do three or four times the actual speed limit is fine. Plus I did get this thing up to about 40 kilometers an hour when we were driving it and it's scary. It vibrates, it's not very smooth. So I'm okay with the speed and the limited speed that we're gonna get out of it. The whole point is something that I can drive down to the lake, get on the boat, go do some surfing, then drive back up the hill to the cottage where we'll just park it and plug it in. So going electric's not a really big deal. Going with a 3000 watt motor, it's probably about right, but I have no idea. I'm just guessing at a lot of what we're doing here because I've never done this before. So you're gonna watch a total amateur try to do an electric conversion. This might give you the courage to try this yourself or we can maybe laugh at my stupidity together. I don't know, we're gonna find out. So the first thing we gotta do is strip out 
the old running gear. So the running gear is all in the back. Luckily it's on a separate frame that just makes it easy. So all you gotta do is unbolt it and the whole thing will come out. So I'm under the Jeep here. The first thing I've done is unclipped all the electrical. I just went and unplugged everything I could. It all kind of comes back up here under the hood. We did go under here, unclipped everything from up under the hood. It did come through the firewall. And I'll show you guys that. To the dash here, so we've just unclipped the entire dash, all of the switches, all of the lights, all of everything. Most of these clips are unique, so they're all different. So to plug it all back in, somebody could just plug them in and they'll be able to figure out what they're all for. It's been super easy to pull all the electrical out. That hasn't been a big deal at all. Once you've got all the electrical and you've got the throttle cable, you've got the gas line, everything disconnected, it's time to unstart, it's time to start unbolting the entire engine carriage, which is only held in by the two suspension pieces and two bolts near the front. That's it, just four total bolts and the whole thing drops right out. So now you can see the entire engine running gear, everything is all out. It's all bolted nicely onto this carriage. The next step is to start stripping everything off the carriage because I actually want to keep this carriage. That's what I'm gonna run the electrical system onto. So I need to keep that for it to go back in. So again, you just follow the bolts, undo the bolts that need to come undone. It's very straightforward. It's easy enough to get yourself into trouble with a basic, basic tool set. Now we've got the engine totally unclipped from the frame. I've got, you can see my suspension still here. So this will bolt all back in. The plan now is to reattach the entire electrical system that you saw over there, bolt it into here, and then bolt this back into the Jeep. So here's the Jeep with everything all out. So I've got the jack stands holding the back end up. It supports it quite nicely. You can see the attachment points closer here. So there was a bolt here, there was a bolt over there, and then up here was our suspension point. There was one here, and there was one over there. That was it, those four bolts. Once those all came out, the whole thing dropped down and just rolled out the back easily. You can see we've got some of the wiring hanging down from our lights, our batteries up in here. It's all disconnected, so this is totally clean, ready to accept our new electric axle. Now here's a shot of all of the engine components after it's all come out. So you can see there's a lot of wiring here still. So the harness is still there. I did take the brake system off because I needed to to get the axle out. I've got my shifter for my two different speeds. The exhaust, everything's there. I've got the axle is here. This is what I was talking about, a single solid axle. So if you know anything about differentials, this does not want to turn at all and the tires don't slip. Those tires are big and they're beefy. So this just was a horrible setup for pavement. On the dirt, it's probably just fine, but we run pretty much on pavement for everything. So I needed that differential. You can see I've got the cover off of the engine here because I was playing with it, trying to get uh, some of the try to get the starter back working it wasn't working so i was like you screw it i'm going to just go electric conversion that seems a whole lot easier plus it solves the other problems that i was having so here's your final shot of the jeep with the whole back end all out ready to go electric this is going to be so cool when it's all done because there's just so much there now you're probably wondering, where am I gonna put the batteries? I've actually ordered a special battery that I can take this gas tank out and the battery is gonna fit right in the front. I'm waiting for that battery to arrive. So we're gonna keep plugging away on the Jeep while we wait for that battery. It's not here yet, but that gives me tons of time to get everything mocked up in place and all the wiring done so that as soon as the battery shows up, hopefully it's just time to drop it and turn it on and test drive this sucker. So this is the end of step one of our multi-step electric conversion. I'd love for you to follow along with us. Go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the bell so that you can follow along 
with this build and check out some of our other videos. We've got lots of great content in this space where we're just screwing around with mechanical stuff and also the technology space. So I'm super excited to get this axle, this rear end bolted into there. That's gonna be coming up soon. We'll start test fitting the motor. We've got a lot to do. Once I get this all kind of set up aside, I'm gonna sell this to somebody who is looking for a motor for a project of some sort, hopefully recover some of the cost of this whole system here. Super excited to keep this project going and I can't wait to show it to you guys. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.